Our project is the Dirt Devil Ultra Hand Vacuum, and our group members are Caitlin Barrett, Nathaniel Huntley Adams, Patrick O'Connor, and Arsenio Gonzalez. In our first test run, we use the hose to vacuum up the rice. In our second test run, we use the brush to vacuum up the dirt. And one thing you have to be careful of when vacuuming is not to go backwards because it actually spews the dirt even further. So it only, in, it only performs its intended function while moving forward. Another undesirable characteristic of the vacuum is the bag. First of all, it's really difficult to take off. And secondly, Whenever you're actually vacuuming, the dirt doesn't necessarily go into the bag. So before you take off the bag, you have to make sure to like shake the vacuum or bang it or even run the brush through a few times to get all the dirt in there. Okay. This is a Dirt Devil Ultra Hand, hand Vacuum Cleaner. And this bad boy is mainly designed to clean smaller, more smaller places. <laughs> and it's more of a versatile version of a bigger size vacuum since you can change from the toothbrush to the tube. Okay, the Dirt Devil Ultra Hand Vacuum Cleaner falls into the low price range and the main characteristics of this appliances are like they're small, portable, lightweight, they have decent suction power, uh, they're designed mainly for smaller places and all, almost all of them work with cords and some of them are backless. The mid-range prices uh, tend to be long lasting, a uh, little bigger in size. They have bigger power and they mainly cordless and they tend to do the work of the smaller vacuums faster and more effective. The high price range vacuums tend to be the slimmer version of the regular sized vacuums and they have they have they're more technological and they have an option to wet and dry cleaning as well as they're the most powerful ones in the market we are now going to take apart the dirt devil ultra hand vac um, basically there are about five screws that you gotta take apart on the red part so once you do that, you open it up, and you've got the motor, and the brush, and the brush is connected to the motor with this rubber um, band, and it basically just goes around here, and it connects to this, which turns turns and then this also turns and uh, Patrick do you want to talk about what the motor is sure the motor is an armature winding it consists of an electromagnet in the middle and it turns with an electric field with a positive north magnet and a south magnet and it puts a current through it and it creates a spin and everything is powered by the motor. Yep. So now I'm going to take apart the uh, fan fixture in the top that actually sucks in the air. And there are a few more screws in that one, but for time's sake, just did one. And as you can see, this turns, which sucks in the air. And then it spit out the back into the uh, the bag. All right, so the switch controls the different fan speeds of the vacuum. There's an off switch, which is held all the way to the back, and then it goes to a medium speed and a fast speed. And basically, the switch triggers to these different wires to control how fast the motor spins. Alright, so the vacuum cleaner works on the principle of Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli's principle states that for an inviscid flow, an increase in the speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously 
while a decrease in pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. Um, so in a nutshell, when the speed of a fluid or gas increases, its pressure decreases, and high pressure flows to low. So uh, an example of this would be like an aircraft wing, where the wind uh, to go over the wing um, is it speeds up, so that creates low pressure, and the wind below the wing is high pressure, so high flows to the low, which creates lift, and the airplane goes up. So our vacuum cleaner fan works just like a plane wing, whereas it's, it is curved in order to direct the air behind it, and when the, it spins fast enough, it creates low pressure, and the high pressure outside gets sucked into the low pressure chamber inside, high flows to low, and it, and it spit it out into the bag at the back end. This is the motor of the hand vacuum. It controls the fan and the dirt brush. The only thing moving in this motor is the axle, the armature, and the commutator. The commutator is a small cylinder near the bottom, and the armature is the copper windings just above the commutator in the center of the motor where it is barely visible. Here you can see all three parts rotating as one. There are two copper windings fixed on opposite sides of the armature. The two copper windings together serve as one permanent magnet with one coil being the north pole and the other coil being the south pole. The armature is an electromagnet with one side being positive and the other side being negative. The armature spins so that the positive side of the armature is facing the copper coil with the south pole and the negative side of the armature is facing the copper coil with the north pole. The last component of the motor is the two fixed brushes that surround the commutator. When the commutator spins, it rubs against the two brushes. The contact between the commutator and the brushes causes the armature to switch its poles so that it has to reorient itself. The armature's switch in polarity happens every half turn and this causes the continuous rotation.